Welcome to this week's market drama. We'll begin with the S&P 500, which was up 0.9% for the week. NASDAQ was up 1.7% uh, for the week. Uh, we just finished February, a really strong month for uh, stock market. S&P was up 5.2%. NASDAQ was up 6.1%. Uh, so year to date, S&P is up now 7.7%. NASDAQ is up 8.4% uh, year to date. And if you look at the drivers, right, it continues to be the overall the same story, which is one, the AI uh, narrative, right, with uh, NVIDIA kind of leading the way. We've seen stocks like A and D, uh, other call it like chip manufacturers, uh, continue to rise, kind of in the right in the coattails, if you will, of of the the rally on uh, on Nvidia. But it's not only um, technology stocks. We have seen a broadening of uh, the stock market rally, and uh, a big component of that has to be with earnings. Right, ninety uh, percent of the S and P five hundred companies have reported results. Revenue is growing at 3.8% as a whole, and earnings growth uh, is tracking uh, at a solid 7.5%, right? So if earnings are growing and it's not just technology uh, sector stocks, right, that's going to that's gonna give some, uh, that's going to give some tailwinds for, for the stock market uh, rally. So that's on the earnings side. We did have some inflation data this week that also helped. Um, the markets. We had personal consumption expenditures um, index. This is the PCE index that the uh, Federal Reserve watches uh, very closely. When we look at that number for January, it was up for the core number, each, including uh, excluding food and energy. It was up 2.8% year over year. That was as expected. It is a long way from the 5.5% we saw in March 2021, right? So it does continue to uh, to fall, maybe not at the pace that we originally intended uh, or the market intended, but it is continuing to fall. And that combined with um, that combined with strong earnings uh, data points this week uh, allowed the market to reach all time highs as of Friday. Uh, Friday was the first of uh, of March. Uh, this there was also on Friday the um, manufacturing PMI data for U for the U.S. Here, PMI is uh, it's a call it like a a leading indicator because it does give you a sense of like more the closest to real time data uh, via surveys of how in this case manufacturing is doing here in the U.S. It rose to fifty two point two in February. Above fifty means expansion. Below fifty means uh, that essentially that sector. Uh, is not, it's, it's actually contracting. So overall manufacturing, which used to be one of the, you know, kind of the worst parts of the economy for, for uh, a couple of years really, is starting to show now signs of kind of expansion territory that definitely helped the markets Friday. Basically we hit all time highs. Why? Because we're seeing inflation continue to fall, right? PCE showed us that you see the worst parts of the economy, like manufacturing, actually coming out of a manufacturing recession. And then you have strong earnings, right? All of those combined does kind of tell the story of why the markets are, are all-time highs. Uh, when you look at things going forward, right, what is the market going to look for? Uh, in March, the Federal Reserve will give us a, an indication of where they see interest rates going, um, how the economy uh, is faring. So, so in March, that's really going to be the next kind of uh, uh, the, the next signal, big signal, the market's going to be looking for. When it comes to next week, or uh, we have ISM service PMI data. We also have the non-farm payrolls report that will give us a, a good indication of how the economy is faring when it comes to jobs. That's it for this week. Stay tuned for next week.